What's up, my intrepid Cat Mojo Tears? It is science time today. Well, not just science. It's fun time, science time. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful day in the cat neighborhood. Today, we are going to learn about whiskers. Yes, we are. Let's get mojo-fied. Today we're gonna to learn about what whiskers are and the function they serve and all kinds of crazy facts about them. So let's get started, all right? What you might know is that they're beautiful. What you might not know is all the functions they serve in a cat's world. They are vital from balance to navigation, to gauging prey, to staying away from predators, to emotion. It's all there. So let's start with the anatomy of a whisker. Whiskers are called tactile hairs, but they're really not hairs. They're a lot coarser and thicker, and they go a lot deeper, about three times deeper than just regular fur. They are surrounded by a blood supply and nerve endings down in that root that function to send a lot of different messages to the brain. And what you might not know is that whiskers are in a lot of different places, not just the muzzle of your cat. They're also above the eyes, the chin, the jaw, the backs of their legs. I mean, they are in a lot of different places, all serving basically the same function, but none more prominent and none, I would say, more important than the ones right here on the muzzle. Not only is the base of the whisker surrounded by copious nerve endings and blood supply, just to make sure that all that information gets from where it started to where it's gotta go, uh -huh, but at the end of the whisker is something called a proprioceptor, which is a specialized organ, and that helps to take information from all around them and bring it in. As a matter of fact, when it comes to detecting air currents or even something that a cat is brushing up against, if something hits the tip of that whisker, it vibrates down into that follicle and vibrating is what it's all about. It's because a whisker is also called a vibrisse and vibrisse comes from the Latin to vibrate. So now we know the basic anatomy of a whisker, but what about how it evolved? Why on a cat? The history of the whisker, the history. Almost all primates and many mammals have whiskers to some degree or another, but why did they become more prominent on some and less prominent on others? Well, glad you asked. A lot of it has to do with animals that evolved to be nighttime hunters like our cat, or uh, animals that have to navigate in dark places, like underwater animals, like seals. And uh, a lot of stops in between, a lot of rodents have to also navigate in the dark because they're trying to get away from the cats. Aha, leveling the playing field. But anyhow, with cats, it all came down to how they hunt. They hunt during dusk and dawn hours mostly. Their prey is up around those times as well. Low light. Their eyes are not so great. Uh, whereas their hearing is amazing, their, their sense of smell is pretty amazing, their vision is not so much. Why? Because when cats uh, evolved to hunt nighttime creatures, they wanted to get far away. They wanted to make sure they could see in the distance and detect movement in the distance. But as you get closer, cats are actually pretty nearsighted. As a matter of fact, anything about 30 centimeters or closer to their body, they almost can't see it at all, but that's where the whisker comes in. Think about it, you guys. A cat is in the dark or low light. Their eyes can pick up something way far away, but their whiskers can actually detect the change in air currents around them. So if a prey is coming anywhere near them, that prey has to move the air. The whiskers are like, ooh, what's that? So now we're gonna explore a little bit. Now the whiskers are making sure we don't bump into anything, that nothing is coming near us while we're hunting something else. Else. And then as we get close, we can also tell with our nose whether it's a prey or predator. We can also get out of the way then. As the cat hunts, as they stalk and as they jump, then this amazing thing happens. As the prey gets close enough, the whiskers help basically like air traffic controllers, bring them into the grasp of the claws, making sure that they are as absolutely accurate as they can get when it comes to the neck bite, that kill bite that cats will do to make sure that whatever they're hunting stops struggling. Whiskers guide them from the eyes to the mouth and claws. I mean, those whiskers are working. All of these whiskers have function. In fact, all of these tactile uh, receptors take up almost 40% of a cat's brain. That's how important they are. So now we know how the whisker evolved and how our raw cat, our ancestor, used it and passed it along, along that sort of DNA timeline to your present day house cat. 
your modern day cat companion. So how does it work for the modern cat? One of the things that is so important to cats, period, whether they are the raw cat, the house cat, or any place in between, is balance. And whiskers give an incredible sense of balance. They also allow to judge distance. So when a cat is jumping from here to there, they are judging not just with their eyes and not just with their ears and all the places in between, but their whiskers are doing some work to judge that distance and make sure they can make that jump. As I mentioned before, Whiskers are going to be at least the width of a cat's body. So that means that when they're trying to get into tight spaces, something brushes up against the end of those whiskers, they're pretty sure not to go any deeper than those whiskers tell them to go. Whether it's in the dark or whether it's just gauging, can I fit right there? The whiskers will let you know. Another thing that helped both the raw cat and your cat is the fact that whiskers help trigger blink reflexes. You know, you have nice long whiskers right up here, much finer whiskers, but they serve a purpose. Something falls on them, they know to blink. They go up against a plant, they know to avoid. It's just a way to save their eyes and whiskers are there for that as well. And now just a few did you knows, a few stray whisker facts. Number one, how many whiskers does a cat have on their muzzle? The answer, 24. Bet you didn't know that one. Also, did you know what the world record is for the longest whisker? No, I bet you you don't know. No, don't be Googling it right now. Just listen to your cat, daddy. The world record, and yes, they measure these things for a cat's whiskers, is actually 19 centimeters or about seven and a half inches. Those are some whiskers. And here's another little stray offshoot fact. Certain mammals, and especially rodents, will take those whiskers and move them around in the air. Why that is exactly? Probably to gauge what's going on in much the same way as we're talking, but they move back and forth. What is that called? Whisking, hence the whisker. Jackson, I never would have known this had you not figured this out. I know, I'm just this, this exploding, just source of cat, whatever. Anyway, whiskers can also help communicate mood to us. We know that if a cat is got just nice relaxed whiskers out here to the side, that's just a nice relaxed cat. If their whiskers are pointing forward, that is, I'm at attention. I am figuring something out right over here. It takes a lot of muscles to point those whiskers forward. So they're excited, whether that's play or whether that's hunting or whether that's what are you, that also is communicating mood. Now also if a cat's whiskers are back, usually what's also accompanying that, ears back, eyes somewhat dilated, it's fear, it's apprehension. But don't forget, whiskers are just part of the whole. When we're taking a look at our cat's mood, we're looking at everything from eyes, ears, whiskers, where their tail is, are they slinking, are they upright? There's so many things that we've gone into in other videos like this one right here, and that'll just give you an overall glance of how whiskers fit into the whole body picture. Now, a couple of things that people ask me all the time, I'm gonna answer them right now. The most common questions that I get about whiskers and not so common answers, because why would I give a common answer? The first one is about whisker stress. The idea of whisker stress is that uh, when a cat goes to eat, it has been theorized that when those whiskers have to be forced into a bowl-shaped world, it's going to cause that cat stress. Now, with all of the information I've given you today, that seems to hold water, right? The idea that a cat, if they have to squeeze their whiskers into something, it's not gonna be the most comfortable thing and they might avoid it. Now, there has been a lot of back and forth, a lot of controversy even about whisker stress. Personally, I subscribe to it. Now, does that mean that cats are just gonna avoid bowls that they can't fit their whiskers around? No, but why bother finding out? Why not use bowls that are meant to allow for whisker stress. There are even some whisker stress bowls right here that I made, just saying. If you wanna know more about whisker stress, here's a great place to look. My good friend, Dr. Michael Delgado has a blog. You should check it out and take a look at the link down below in the description for the specific blog about whisker stress, the controversy, and a new study that sheds a tiny bit of light on whether whisker stress is or isn't. Another question that gets asked all the time is, is it okay if I trim my cat's whiskers? And based on everything that you've heard me say, from hair follicle receptors to proprioceptors to blood and nerve endings and the importance and the, and, and the balance, no, don't ever cut your cat's whiskers. It is totally disorienting to them. If you cut their whiskers, it's almost like uh, somebody who's walking on a tightrope with one of those long poles and you just chuck the pole. All of a sudden they have no balance anymore. The way they perceive their world, not just from balance, but being able to execute all those whisker functions gone. It is like blindfolding them. Don't do it. 
And to that end, knowing what you now know about whiskers, be mindful about how you touch them. Don't go against that whisker grain when you're petting your cat. Don't poke, don't pull, don't do any of that sort of quasi, I wonder what happens if I do this, because it's just uncomfortable. Knowing how many nerve endings, how deep it goes into their face, just don't do it, appreciate it. Appreciate it from a distance. Appreciate it like I'm appreciating it today. And I hope that's what you're taking away today is man, whiskers do that? Yes, they do. And probably more than what I'm saying, but that's just the not so deep dive. Or was it a deep dive? And hopefully that's what you get out of it today. Whiskers are this wonderful connection to the raw cat, to the ancestor, from the very beginning of cats hunting at night. Often, it is theorized, to hunt at the times when the dinosaurs weren't out. Whiskers! Amazing. I can go on forever, and you probably don't want me to. So anyway, you guys, appreciate the beauty, appreciate the function, appreciate the history, the complexity, everything that is the whisker. All right, you guys, that's it. Now listen, the only reason that a video like this exists is because a lot of you asked for it. So if you wanna see a video on a certain topic, that's what the comments are for. Just let me know, and chances are I'll see it and either go, hmm, or hmm. Huh. Also, just make sure you're subscribing, checking all the bells and the whistles here to make sure that you see these videos when they're meant to be seen, which is when they come out and not two months later. You're like, Jackson, I wanted to know about Whiskers two months ago. Now what? Okay, everybody, until next time, all light and all love and all Whisker mojo to you. Whisking, whisking, whisking. Whistle while I whisk. Whistle while I whisk. Yeah.